This was a part of the world where fairies appeared within one hour of a prince or princess being born to pronounce the destiny of the baby. For this, there lived in a dense, thick wood six fairies. There was one more who lived, not in the forest, but rather in the swamp. She was new in the kingdom and was not bothered to get to know the other fairies at all. For she was mean, selfish, and sadistic. So when one day the fairies knew that a princess would be born in the land that night, the good fairies were worried. We must be careful. Who knows what nasty spell the new swamp fairy might cast on the newborn child? She has not met all of us yet, so she does not know how many of us are there. Maybe the two of us can hide behind pillars or something, and then save our blessings just before the end of the hour. That way, if the swamp fairy does something nasty, we shall be able to counter it and save the child from harm. Yes, that is an indeed a fine idea. That night, as soon as the princess was born, as was the custom, in the presence of the king and the queen, two of the good fairies hid themselves behind huge pillars in the king's chambers, while the other four appeared beside the child to give her their blessings. We shall call you Princess Daylight. Wherever you go, you shall spread love and warmth. Your heart will be full of courage and resolve. You shall always be able to see right from wrong and make wise choices. You shall always be loved and respected. The king and queen were overjoyed and so thankful to hear of the wonderful blessings. But then, who should come there but the Swamp Fairy to spoil everything? They call you Daylight, is it? Then I bless you that as long as day, light, or the light of day is visible, you shall remain fast asleep day after day, every single day of your life. <laughs> But you shall be awake and merry all night. How dare you interrupt me? Y you had finished your turn. Ah, but I was laughing. I hadn't finished laughing. So I get a second chance. Yes, you shall be awake and merry at night. Just as merry as the moon, you see. You shall wax and wane exactly like the moon. <laughs> the Swamp Fairy laughed a long, long laugh, and the one remaining good fairy waited till she fell silent. Then she stepped ahead. I assume you were done. Huh, how many of you are there? Ah ha 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 ha! And someday, when someone kisses your hand without knowing who you are, you shall be freed of sleeping all day and waxing and waning with the moon. Ha ha ha! I assume your turn was over. Ha 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 ha! And so it came to be. The princess laughed and crowed all night and slept all day. She would be merry and bright at night on full moon nights. As the moon grows bigger and brighter each night, the princess too would become rosier, merrier, till she would be at her happiest, healthiest on full moon days. And then, just as the moon grows smaller and paler again, night by night, till at last it disappears for a while, the princess would become weaker and paler till looking almost deathly by the new moonlight. 
and she would fall fast asleep at the first crack of dawn, not to wake up till the sun was set and gone. In all of her 20 years, the princess had never once seen the sun. Her heart ached for the pain of her family and friends felt for her suffering. Father, I wish to shift into the woods in Rosewood Cottage. No, stay here in the palace with us. It breaks our heart to be apart from you. And it breaks my heart, father, to see the pain on your face when I become pale and sick with the waning moon. In the woods I feel free. I don't have to feel bad for the hurt my curses cause you and mother. Let me live there, please, till my curse is lifted. Uh, but... Let her go. She is old enough now, dear. Our pain is not greater than hers. I understand how terrible you must feel. Go, my child, and come back when you have seen the sun. We will be right here, waiting to embrace you in our arms. So the princess started staying in the forest with just a few ladies in waiting to take care of her when she fell sick. The princess loved to wander in the forests and go for long walks when she was well. And she would love to wander in the forests, away from the sorrowful eyes of her ladies-in-waiting, when she would start to wane. One day, a stranger, who lost his way in the woods, came to this queer little cottage. Yes! Welcome, Prince Edward! You know me? Well, since I am a fairy... Then you must know that my father lost a battle and made me escape to the woods. Come in! Yes, sometimes you must escape to fight another day. The fairy gave the prince a hearty meal and a comfortable bed to rest at night. The next morning, when the prince was leaving the fairy's cottage... Stay away from the swamp deep in the woods. And always remember, son, one moment of compassion is more powerful than the most powerful magic of the world. I will always certainly remember that. And so the prince ventured into the woods. It was three nights to the full moon and he was looking for a place to rest. He heard singing, more melodious than he had ever known in his life. He went in the direction of the sound. He saw the most beautiful maiden the moon ever shone on. She was dancing and singing in the moonlight with such merriment as though all the joy and love in the world had been put inside her heart. The prince stood mesmerized almost all night until just before the crack of dawn, a few ladies came and took the maiden with them. And this happened for three consecutive nights, the princess singing with even more beauty and joy for her well-being was growing till the full moon night. That night, the prince approached her. I have been hearing you every night for the past two nights. Your voice is so beautiful. I am the Prince Edward. Pray tell me who you are. I am Princess Daylight. Do you live here? In the woods? Have you seen the sun? Who hasn't seen the sun? I must leave. Please do not wait for me again. There was such sadness in the princess's voice that the prince's heart ached for her. But since she did not want him to see her again, the gentleman that the prince was went away from there and wandered into the woods for many days. It was just three nights to the new moon. That evening, as he was wandering, he saw a woman panicking as though she were searching for someone. Princess! Oh, princess! Where are you? Is everything all right, my lady? Can I help you? Our princess went for 
for a walk that has not yet returned. When the prince heard that, he rushed at once, consumed by the desire to find the princess. He looked all over the forest till he came to the swamp. The swamp fairy saw him. She did not want this stranger anywhere near the princess, lest he kissed her hand and free her from her curse. So she cast a spell on him. You will never want to kiss the hand of Princess Daylight. <laughs> the prince wandered all over the woods, and suddenly he saw a strange form in the darkness. He went near it. It was an old woman who looked terribly pale and exhausted. She was barely able to open her eyes. Here, may I help you, my lady? No. With every passing moment, the old woman seemed to get paler and weaker. The prince didn't know what to do. He saw tears coming down the old woman's eyes. The prince did not know how to comfort her. He massaged her hands, stroked her forehead, and then, in the profound compassion he felt for her, he kissed her hand just to comfort her. The moment he kissed her hand, a change became to come over the woman, and she became her own self, Princess Daylight. The swamp fairy sensed the curse lifting and flew to the place where the prince and the princess were. Princess! No, no, this can't be. I had put a spell on you that you will never want to kiss her hand. Ah, he kissed her hand out of compassion. Compassion is when we do something even if we don't want to, just to help or comfort someone. Your selfishness will never be able to understand the power of compassion. This was the last time you spited anyone. I relegate you to the nether regions where you will never be able to harm any other living creature. Ever. No! And then the sun rose and Princess Daylight stayed awake. For the first time in her life, she saw the beautiful, gorgeous thing in the sky. At the sun. She was now free. Her parents embraced her tenderly and cried for joy to see her well. The king was so thankful to the prince that he helped Prince Edward regain his kingdom as gratitude for freeing the princess. The prince and princess eventually fell in love, got married, and lived happily ever after, making sure they enjoyed the glory of the rising sun every single day of their lives. <laughs>